Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the School of Medicine at Vanderbilt. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here with Seth Ogden, who received his PhD in 2009 in cancer biology. And we're glad to have you back on campus. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Tell me a little bit about your path since Vanderbilt. Well, since I was at Vanderbilt, um, my wife got a postdoc with the NIH, and so we moved up to Washington, D.C. area, and uh, I applied for law schools in the Washington, D.C. area, and I got into American University. So I was there full-time for three years, and while I was there, I interned at the uh, tech transfer office uh, in general medicine at the NIH. Um, after my second year, I was a summer associate, uh, which is kind of like an intern at Finnegan, Henderson, Faribault, Garrett and Dunner, which is the firm uh, that ultimately I have uh, taken a job with. And now I'm an associate at Finnegan and I've just finished up my first year. Okay. So tell us about what you did at Vanderbilt while you were here. Uh, while I was at Vanderbilt, I worked on uh, host pathogen interactions between Helicobacter pylori and uh, the human gut. Um, and mainly I was looking at uh, induction of a protein called matrix metalloproteinase 7 that's related to inflammation. Um, and H. pylori uh, causes cancer through inflammation-mediated processes. And uh, so I published a couple papers while I was here and uh, enjoyed my time, but knew also that lab research wasn't quite what I wanted to do. And so um, with the blessing of Dr. Peak, I headed out into the world to uh, pursue a law career. <laughs> Nice. Um, tell me what you do now, like what specifically um, you do during the day as a job. So about 80% of my time is uh, dedicated to what's known as ANDA litigation, and that involves um, generic pharmaceutical companies that want to come on the market with their drugs. And we generally represent the branded pharmaceutical companies and engage in patent infringement litigation. Uh, in which we allege infringement by these generic pharmaceutical companies. Uh, some of my other time is spent uh, counseling clients. Uh, that can involve any number of things, whether it be uh, with marketing issues, legal issues, patent portfolio issues. Um, a lot of that also involves patent prosecution, which is the process of applying for a patent with the Pat United States Patent and Trademark Office, and then working through the process with the examiner there to actually get a patent granted. Okay. So what does a typical day look like then? Um, there is no typical day. Uh, a typical day does start probably about 8 o'clock in the office uh, with emails and phone call checking, uh, responding to all that, making sure everything is up to date with clients. Um, usually I have to take a look at what they like to call the docket, which is really just my schedule. Look at any deadlines and get started on anything that uh, that's coming up. Um, but it could involve phone calls to a client, it could involve meeting with partners, it could involve doing online research or heading up to the library for research. Um, it might involve just a lot of Google searching and uh, finding information about a product or a competitor. Um, every day is different and every day is interesting. Okay. Tell me about the differences between law school and, and getting your PhD, your JD and your PhD and that experience and maybe why um, what kind of challenges PhD students would have in law school? Um, well, I think actually PhD students are m better equipped for law school than uh, most of their counterparts while they're there. Um, part of that is the, the problem solving skills that you learn as well as uh, kind of learning how to think independently and also you're used to taking tests that involve writing essay questions and, and really paying attention to the professor and what they're trying to teach you and not just regurgitating information. And so I think that gives you a unique advantage in law school. Um, it's different in that it's kind of regimented. Um, your first year, you're put into a group or a section with, in my school, it was about 80 other students. And you all take the same classes together for the entire first year, and you all sit through the same things. Um, and then after that, you have a little more class choice. But you know, it's generally a uh, didactic classroom setting. Um, if you're lucky, you might get into some classes with more applied skills. Um, but then you have to expand out and uh, there's publication involved, working on journals. Many people do moot court or mock trial and that sort of thing. And there's lots of just activities to do things in the community related to your legal studies. Uh, so it's, 
it's different in that you're not so independent, um, but you're certainly well equipped uh, to do the work. So what skills did you have to learn um, after your PhD to be a patent attorney after law school too? What were some of the skills that you um, needed for your job? Um, the biggest skill is uh, learning to deal with politics, I think, um, and kind of learning what it means to be a professional. Uh, I think maybe I might have been a little naive going into things and uh, a little too honest here and there, um, but uh, I've, I've really learned how to deal with other people, how to, how to solve problems, how to manage upwards. Uh, it's not just managing you know, people that might have positions uh, in support of you, but also uh, managing the people who you support. Um, and one of the biggest things is learning how to ask the right questions. And I think that's something that you do somewhat for yourself in your PhD, mm -hmm. but you really have to learn how to ask when a task is given to you, you know, all the right questions to know that you're doing the right thing, because you certainly don't want to go turn in your work and find out that's not what I wanted at all. Um, and that takes a while to learn. Um, the other thing I had to learn was that um, if something goes wrong, you don't apologize, just fix it. Uh, and, you know, People realize that you're going to make mistakes and that it's not always going to go as swimmingly as you hoped, um, and they don't care as long as you just take care of it. And so those are some of the things that I had to kind of learn that I hadn't developed during my PhD. Okay. So if someone was interested in being a patent, a patent attorney, um, what should they do now as a PhD student to better equip them for that path? Um, well, I think the first thing is they need to talk to people who are patent attorneys and they need to make sure that it's for them. Uh, law school is a large financial commitment and patent law is very location specific and so you're kind of going to lock yourself down a bit uh, in terms of your finances as well as where you may be able to uh, live and practice law. So the first thing I would do is definitely contact anyone you know, um, find out you know, what they do, even if you could shadow them, that may be kind of difficult, but it might be possible. Um, and I think once you've done that and you're a little bit more sure, um, I would advise if you have time taking the patent bar and trying to get that out of the way early. And that, that is basically a very difficult exam for scientists uh, that allows you to practice before the patent office and to prosecute or apply for and, and get patents. So networking, it's a hot word for the career search. Um, what does networking look like for you in your career and what would you recommend when it comes to networking? Well, I'm glad you brought up networking because that's one of the things I had to learn after, uh, my, after the PhD that I hadn't really done a lot of. Um, I think LinkedIn is a big networking tool, but you have to learn how to use it to actually get things done. Um, networking, I don't, I'm not really very good at it yet, and I'm still learning, but networking takes a lot more than just sending an email, reaching out here and there. Um, it's trying to get people interested in topics that you're interested in, so you can have a mutual kind of intellectual exchange about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, affecting, you know, meeting, you know, going for a cup of coffee and like getting to know somebody a little bit, because you're a lot more likely to benefit from those sorts of relationships if you have a more tangible connection. So I think with the networking, I'm kind of learning what activities and, and kind of how to approach people uh, in order to actually have a, a real connection. With all the computer screens and everything out there, it's too easy to just kind of sit back and, and um, do it like you would do Facebook or something. Sure, so. okay. Um, I'm sure you had to do a fair number of interviews as you were um, kind of looking for your next job. Do you have any positive or negative uh, experiences that you would want to share about interviewing? Um, I can give you a very good negative experience <laughs> um, and it was totally my fault but you might want to do some research on who you're interviewing with um, because I at the time was interested mainly in patent prosecution and not litigation activities so only dealing with the patent office and one of the firms that I interviewed with, I told them that and didn't realize that they didn't do any of that in their DC office. That was only in other offices and I was interviewing for the DC office. So I never have made that mistake again. Um, <laughs> and so I hope maybe other people will now not make that mistake, but uh, do some research, find out um, who you're interviewing with, what their company really does and uh, you know, 
location specific things and what you're actually applying for and, and how that will uh, relate to uh, the job that you want to do. Nice. So what do you wish you knew as a student or postdoc um, that you know now? Well, I wish I had known how loans work, <laughs> um, how interest works, and what it really takes to pay them back. Because you, you need to, you know, I'm happy with the commitment I made and it's working out, but um, you need to understand when you're signing that little piece of paper that they make it so easy to sign uh, to obtain graduate student loans, what you're really signing up for. I also wish I had known a little bit more about how location specific certain types of careers can be um, and that you may limit yourself in where you can live uh, and also uh, practice what you want to do. Okay. So tell me about your work-life balance. What does that look like for you? I know it's different for everyone. Well, right now I have a one-year-old son, so um, there's no balance, uh, but you know, I get to see him in the morning and I get to see him before he goes to bed at night. Uh, and aside from that, I'm pretty much working. And then we, I get a little time with my wife to kind of uh, decompress each evening. So, um, you know, I think for my colleagues that, you know, don't have families yet, they certainly seem to have a nice balance of social life and, and uh, work. Uh, and for me, the social life has just become family life. So, there's a good balance, it, but it's it's difficult when both uh, people in the relationship are professionals and we both um, have jobs that are very time consuming. Uh, but if you plan well and you work, it's cliched, but if you work smarter, not harder, um, you can really get a lot more done. Uh, so I think it's eye opening, but there are definitely some people who as PhD students or postdocs probably work just as hard, if not harder, um, and just as many hours as, as I do now. And I know I spent a lot of time in the animal facility in the middle of the night while I was here. Um, so it's just a little bit different sort of scheduling. Um, but you're on call and you're, you're tethered to your phone and you have to be there when things happen and be ready to do whatever you're asked to do. Um, but that kind of makes it exciting. Um, so what words of wisdom do you have for students and postdocs who are starting their career search today? Um, well, I guess my words of wisdom are uh, don't count out any opportunity because there are an infinite number of different types of jobs that are looking for someone with the problem solving skills that you've gained from your PhD. Um, and if you're thinking about patent law, take the LSAT twice. Your first year grades are the most important thing that you can possibly do. And if you have time, take the patent bar. And so I think that's probably the, the most important stuff. Awesome. OK. Well, thanks for coming. We enjoyed having you, and um, we appreciate your time. All right. Thank you.